from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, this is day three of three days live water wall coverage of VMworld 2018. This is theCUBE, I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host this morning is Justin Warren, and happy to welcome back to our program two CUBE alums from the VMware Storage and Availability Business Unit. Yang Bing Lee, second time on theCUBE this week, is the yes. uh, mm -hmm. Senior Vice President and General Manager of the group, and Christos Karamanoulis is the Fellow and CTO. Thank you both for joining us. Great to be here. Great to be here. All right, so first of all, congratulations. A lot of news uh, this week, a uh, lot of excitement around it, and uh, we're, we're talking off cameras. There's so much there that people don't understand, you know, some of the work that went into this, and some highlights as to things that I know VMware thinks uh, mm -hmm. will be very game-changing over the next couple of years. So we're, we're excited to dig into this. Yen yeah. Bing, why don't you start us off with uh, you know, a little bit of an overview from your group as to uh, the, the news this week. Yeah, happy to do that. I, I think it's, uh, so we are seeing a lot of customer energy around what we're doing in storage and availability. You know, there's huge momentum uh, behind product like vSAN and our customers are truly embracing HCI in very mainstream uh, use cases and we've seen customer after customer have gone all in, meaning they're taking HCI and made a determination to run that for all of their virtualized uh, workload. So very exciting time. But what's more interesting is their expanded view on what HCI is about. You know, certainly we started with virtualizing compute and storage together on servers, uh, but we're seeing rapid expansion of that definition. You know, we've been a believer that HCI is fundamentally a software-led architecture. I think now there is more recognition that. Mm -hmm. And it's also going from just compute and storage to the full stack of the entire software-defined data center. It's expanding into the cloud, as you've seen from VMC on AWS. It's expanding to the edge. It's expanding from just traditional apps to cloud native apps. You know, we've announced the beta for uh, you know, vSAN to become the storage platform for Kubernetes uh, in a vSphere uh, environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of uh, exciting uh, expansion around how customers want to see HCI. And if you look at HCI, hybrid cloud, SDDC, the boundary among these three is not very, very clear. Mm. Uh, I think they're all converging to work something that's very common. Yeah, uh, Christos, uh, I want you to help mm -hmm. unpack this a little bit for us. I remember speaking to you a couple of years ago in your team. We know how many years of effort went into set the groundwork for vSAN with the, th the things, uh, you know, the, just the underlying things that we're having with the APIs and development with your partner ecosystem. Taking vSAN as a foundation, oh, it's going to work with Kubernetes and cloud and everything. It's not a simple port, like, you know, no offense to the hardware people, but oh, putting it on a new platform, I need to test it, integrate it, make it a couple tweaks, but at the software level, there's a lot of things that go on here. Mm -hmm. Talk about what the, what the team's been working on, some of the big architectural things that have been happening. Oh yeah, absolutely. There are some uh, fundamental changes. We never stop, we never, declare that we have finished what we're doing. Obviously, the world is changing around us. Not only the hardware, as you know, there are many important changes there with NVMe becoming now prevalent and even new hardware technologies appearing like persistent memory. But for us, a focal point the last year or so has been how do we move our entire software stack that uh, Jan Bing uh, uh, outlined earlier into any type of environment, including public clouds. So you see now with uh, VMware Clouds and AWS, customers can run their applications there without having to re-platform them. It's the exact same environment. Hmm. So a keystone of that, you know, that environment is the storage. How do you virtualize storage? How do you deal with any type of uh, uh, infrastructure, so vSAN was developed for physical devices, you know, SSDs and magnetic disks, more recently NVMe. Now, what we want to give is the option to our customers to use the cost efficiencies of cloud storage without those sacrificing the semantics, the, the, the properties of the vSphere stack. So we worked, uh, we did a lot of engineering to make vSAN work on top of EBS. So it may sound, you know, 
simple when you announce it at the keynote of VMworld, but it took a lot of uh, hard engineering to adapt uh, a platform, vSphere and vSAN, was designed for physical hardware to now work on virtual uh, storage volume. So that is just one example, and obviously there are more examples for cloud native uh, use cases, as you said. Yeah, I don't think people quite understand the, the implications of that. The fact that you can use things in the same way in multiple different locations, the whole idea behind multi-cloud is All that right. if, you can, if you can operate it in the same way as you can on-site, as you can in whichever cloud you choose, yeah. For, for enterprises who are used to doing things in one way and have made big investments in mm -hmm. VMware, yes. this just opens up an entire universe of opportunity for them. Absolutely, and you get the best of uh, both worlds, right? It's uh, uh, you, you have the same operational model, the same characteristics. I can run now on Amazon uh, applications that use vSphere's HA or uh, yeah. vMotion features that require self storage. On the cloud, you do not have self storage. EBS volumes can be accessed by yes, one, uh, host at the time, unlike uh, storage area networks. And vSAN brings those storage area network semantics, all in software, of course, yeah. on the cloud. So I can run my traditional applications as well as some new generation applications. And for us, strategically, uh, what we've done with EBS, if you think about that, is one step into a, a much bolder vision where vSAN becomes this common storage platform that virtualizes any type of storage, physical, or cloud or virtual, so and which exposes the same operational model and the same storage semantics to workers that run on vSphere platforms. And this is, you know, just one step. Yeah, and it's, a, it's certainly, there is the common operation model that's very appealing to all of the enterprise customers, but we're truly marrying the strengths and the capabilities of vCN and vSphere and the VMware platform with what uh, EBS uniquely provide, that's elasticity, scalability, but you know, we have a much richer set of data services that right. we've already built into the whole VMware stack. Yeah, yeah and bring, bring up some really interesting points. When, when, when we put our critical analysis hat on. Mm -hmm. When the partnership was announced, it was like, well, Amazon's got access to 500,000 VMware customers. We're going to start getting customers comfortable with Amazon. Great, they can start moving over. Uh -huh. The thing that really caught a lot of our attention is it's some of the Amazon services that are now coming to the VMware customers. Yeah. So mm -hmm. EBS is a really good one. Uh, when you talk about uh, the you know the database capabilities that, yeah. that Amazon has, that now I can do on premises. Mm -hmm. This is a partnership, a two way street. It's not not you know j just a one way. Maybe you speak a little bit about that that maturation. Uh, and uh, you know I, I know definitely want to get from Christos yes. also. Uh, there's definitely. questions about some of the technical ways of how that works. So yeah, I, I what I'm excited is exactly what you described, this is not a one-way street. It's really bi-directional, and uh, the levels of collaboration is not just uh, uh, superficial, is deep levels of integration and leveraging each other's strengths uh, in terms of both uh, technology as well as customer reach. I think that what makes the partnership is, you know, people can see that it's taking to a whole new level. And Christos has been very deeply involved with the various solution architects when we examine you know, how we take RDS uh, back on-prem to a VMware environment. I think you can tell a lot more stories uh, behind that. For us, actually, it was a great uh, great learning experience, I must admit, uh, because obviously we see uh, uh, strongly the desire of our customers to start moving from managing the low-level, nitty-gritty details of the physical IT infrastructure, which were, you know, traditionally helping them to do, to moving up the stack. Mm -hmm. Many of them now, uh, they want to help their own users, their own customers, internal customers, to, to run workloads, applications. And what are the most critical components of business uh, critical applications? They are databases, right? So yeah. how can we make the life of our customers easier? How can we provide them the tools to offer data, databases as a service to their own users. So this has been our high level objective. And of course our partnership with uh, AWS helps us deliver some of those uh, properties. Yeah, Christos, I want you to go one level deeper for us. <laughs> because be happy to. some people, it's like, wait, RDS, that's you know, the, the, the cool new databases in Amazon. Wait, I can do something on, is that an extension? Am I putting things back and forth? 
those of us that have lived through the virtualization world, getting databases just virtualized took yes. years and a lot of hard work, and I can't just have a database spanning between these and moving back and forth. This right, right. isn't, uh, uh, you know, we haven't broken the laws of physics. Uh, um, we, we have not, but, because uh, here. Help, help, us, yes. help us explain what is and isn't possible today. Right, uh, absolutely. Yeah. First of all, let me uh, highlight what are the, the main pain points of customers. Uh, it's one thing to, to, to set up your application, install it and run it, and it's, but then there are all the day two operations, right? How do you patch the software, the operating system, the database, how do you scale it up or down? How do you uh, even monitor the performance? How do you do data protection, backup, disaster recovery? Those are uh, uh, really uh, painful, difficult tasks that involve a lot of uh, uh, work from uh, the expert database administrators that they'd rather be doing some of the important things that <laughs> address the business needs, right? Yeah. So our objective is to address this. Now, to your point, uh, how do we, you know, what about those laws of physics? How can we have uh, services on the cloud and services on premise? What we announced here, this uh, RDS, rela Relational Database Services on VMware, is a fully standalone and uh, a, a service that runs on VMware environments, on premises. There are no dependencies on the public cloud. Uh, you have your data sets in your own uh, uh, data centers, and this is actually a major requirement of customers, whether it's for compliance reasons, or security, or per, uh, company policies. We ensure that your data stays in your data center, while you still get all the benefits of a managed database that you don't need to do all those you know, little uh, tedious uh, operational tasks I mentioned earlier. Uh, moreover, we support data protection using actually underlying vSphere features like HA and clustering, or even data protection by creating copies of your database in another availability domain within your data center. And this is the, a lot of work that VMware did to make this happen, as you can imagine. Uh, so that's a lot of infrastructure work, but we support the full range of features that you get in AWS without having to go over yeah. the wire and you know build the, those laws of physics. I, I don't think people have quite understood the pro how profound that is. And I mean, we, we're here at a VMware show. I spent a lot of time with developers, and the developers are going to love this because now they can use exactly the same way that they operate in public cloud, which they they've they've loved for many years. Being able to do that on site. The way application development is going to happen inside enterprises where they want to keep it on site, they want to keep it under their own control, they want their data secured inside their own data centers, the ability for them to do that and still develop applications in the same way that they could as cloud native, cloud native now means that it runs on site. That's, mm -hmm. this, is, yeah. this is going to be amazing. Right, absolutely. Our customers are explicitly tell us that they want to consume not storage, yeah. but data. Yes. Those abstractions that matter to the application. So much so that they have been asking us already, hmm, what is next, right? Uh, can you offer us some of these new generation databases, you know, the Mongoose, the Cassandras of the world. Can we have some similar experience with those because they're very painful to deploy and manage in their data center. So, uh, I, I cannot make any commitment, of course, but this is an indication of how much interest there is in this type of services. Yeah, it, it really does show, I think, some of the strategic intent from VMware, and the, this is a very clear move for what is going to be possible for customers to be actual, able to do on site. It's, it's really yeah. quite exciting. And, and for us, you know, our, our role providing you know, all the storage related capability, and we've been certainly you know, expanding our application footprint to cover the Hadoop, the Cassandra, the MongoDB type of application, as well as containerized uh, applications. And you know, we have introduced uh, a lot of new capability uh, or solution that address exactly like uh, uh, like that. Yeah. Yes, containerized applications, for example. I, I, again, an announcement that I think we didn't receive the attention that, uh, in my opinion, deserved is uh, uh, supporting natively in vSphere and with vSAN specifically cloud native use cases. Actually, we're introducing a control plane. We're expanding our storage control plane to manage natively container volumes. Right, so now, the same way today our customers have visibility through the UI or APIs and uh, have management workflows for virtual machines and virtual disks, VMDKs, now they can also manage volumes of containers. 
And as you've heard also, we are working with, uh, you know, with Kubernetes being our main you know, focal point and with PKS to support uh, natively Kubernetes on vSphere down the road. Yeah. Great point, I wonder since, since we're talking about storage here, you talk about mm -hmm. Kubernetes, we talk about what's in the cloud and on-premises, give us the updated view how VMware views and how you're helping customers with, data can't, I can't just move <laughs> you know, data anywhere, yeah. so uh, while it's good to have similar uh, frameworks and different similar tools there, but still where data lives and what I move, how I move it, mm -hmm. do I move it, how that whole kind of data locality uh, right. is seen today. Mm. Yeah, and certainly uh, we have been very keen in defining what we do in the broader category of uh, data management, you know, from data mobility to protection to analytics and to life cycle management, you know, a whole a slew of that. And we've been starting by building a lot of it, you know, first of all, our job is to make vSAN a storage platform that can enable these different demands of, of data. So we've expanded uh, vSAN's role from purely delivering block storage now to offer file and down the road, you know, object, because a lot of the new data will be consumed in an object-like format. And we've also been uh, painting uh, our roadmap for the broader uh, data management, so. Uh, yes, so uh, exactly, on one hand, we provide a platform for primary storage that serves mm -hmm. all the needs of the applications, uh, block, file, object. Mm -hmm. We even may consider a native file uh, interface, actually, for zero data copy, since you're asking about the technical details. We're, I'm very excited about that. We'll, you know, uh, we'll see if you know, some of these things will come in the future, mm -hmm. but then, you, you, given that we have the platform, what we're building on top of that is data mobility and data protection uh, workflows that are driven by policies. The very first step in that direction is our disaster recovery as a service we offer for hybrid clouds. There, the new model is that even how you manage your data is as a service, not the traditional model of installing software and handling different bits and pieces that have to integrate with each other and operate. Very simple, you go to a portal and you manage your data. In this case, starting with disaster recovery use cases, you specify policies like recovery point objectives. Down the road, we may also give you options for recover time objectives. And also specify by policies, what of your data want to be archived and stay on your data center? What of that data can go to the public cloud uh, through your, you know, this uh, hybrid uh, models uh, of cloud model we offer? So. The, our goal down the road uh, is uh, quite ambitious in offering a comprehensive uniform data management across clouds that goes all the way from the edge, your remote office, your uh, uh, oil, oil rig, all the way to the enterprise data centers, to the, to the hybrid clouds. And data mobility there is you know, using our uh, data transport, our archival uh, capabilities that are coming with uh, vSAN native snapshot that we also announced in this uh, VMworld, this will give you the ability to manage your data across all those environments. Yeah. All right, so uh, last thing I just want to say, it, it's interesting to watch this space because we say there's a lot happening under the scenes that people don't understand. I, I was seeing some research lately saying like where AWS lives in the storage ecosystem. I'd written an article a couple years ago, they were the quiet billion dollar you know, storage company and <laughs> one analyst firm said, oh, they're, they're number three and they'll be number one in storage. Uh, Wikibon actually published a report this month mm -hmm. talking about what we call true private cloud. And yeah. in our support where we look at the software ecosystem, um, Yan Bing, do you remember who we had number one on the list there when you uh, take software yeah. plus the ecosystem around there for true private I, cloud? I uh, remember it clearly. Yeah. You said it's VMware. Yeah, um, yeah. so <laughs> what, you know, that surprises some people when you look at there, but uh, I'm, I'm yeah. no surprise to you and your team, I'm sure. Certainly, you know, the, what we've started with uh, vSAN is, uh, you know, it's quickly becoming a big way of you know, how all of vSphere customers uh, consume uh, storage, and certainly that has been our initial focus. Uh, but what we are doing for the cloud, what we're doing for the next generation um, applications, I think we are you know, reimagining a lot of the things. And it's, it's great to have people like Christos, you know, who started 
this journey many, many years ago and continue to, uh, to expand our horizon. And uh, yeah, this is an exciting time for, for, for our business unit and certainly for VMware and our customers. All right, well, Christos and Yanbing really appreciate us being able to geek out, to dig into some of the really important innovations happening in this space. For Justin Warren, I'm Stu Miniman. Still a full third day live coverage here from VMworld 2018. Thanks for watching theCUBE.